Hello. Yes. Cassandra. Ka is the soul. Sound is lots of noise in the middle. And Ra is the sun. An Egyptian chief. I came to New York City from Iowa City. And I came to see Bob Dylan. And that was, I think, in 1960. And I had one of my books, it was called The Problem. It was a small little book that I had published in Iowa City. It was like a little pamphlet, but it was wonderful. It was about Wilbert, and his only friend was his problem. So I thought I'd give it to Dylan. I signed it, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I walked in this room, and he's at a typewriter, smoking like a fiend. And he's typing away, and he says, what do you want? <laughs> and I said, well, well, I came here to see you. You know, I said, I've been listening to your record in Iowa City for the last six months, and I love it. I said, where'd you get them goddamn boots? I said, at the shoe store. Why? You don't like them? <laughs> so he's starting to get on my nerves now. <laughs> he's asking me these strange kind of questions, like, uh, why are you here? What do you want? I said, well, I just want to observe you and get a feeling about you and your music. Oh, this one you'd like. This one was done, um, this is one of my first ones. This is done with pills. I cut tons of pills out and put myself in the middle of a bed. Well, that piece, that's really a funny piece because I found the blueprint of that on the street. And I took it home and I looked at it and right at that point, I think Angela Davis and I was into circus stuff. I like, you know, the, the whole thing with the circuses. And, and I looked at that and I said, and I know it was the rape of psyche. And I looked at it and looked at it and looked at it and I said, oh man, bar and barrel of niggers. <laughs> and that's what I did. That's what exactly what it, I put it down. And Angela Davis is in that little tiny, on the far right, you'll see a picture of um, basically an Egyptian goddess who is probably Nefertiti and beautiful alabaster with a broken nose. And then you'll see a little tiny, uh, one of those little, uh, like that, a cracker, you know, little animal crackers. And she's, a real picture of her is behind that. Yeah. Because I really admired her. I thought she was quite a woman. Well, Cassandra's a very strange creature. Uh, it's about three different personalities, but they're all gathered together in one. And, uh, you know, it's very difficult to really describe me because I'm so uh, off the wall sometimes. And I have a great sense of humor. I see things in the abstract, and I like uh, to... Uh, Actually, what I like to do is enjoy people. What did you do when you were interested in somebody, you would try to meet them? Well, only Gory and Hermione Gingold were the only two people, and Dylan I searched out. But Hermione Gingold was wonderful, and she was living on 57th Street, and I had to go see her, because her number was listed in the phone book. I said, you don't know a bit about me, but I know that you're Hermione Gingold, and I wish to see you. Could you make an audience with me? She said, well, any time you'd like. <laughs> and I went up and I saw her. I saw her a couple of times. She was great. And you found that people were willing to meet Yeah, they really, they really liked me. It was, I just had this way and say, you know, hey, I'm here to see you. I'm an artist and I, you know, I just want to see what you live like. I want to talk to you about certain things. You want to talk to me about anything? <laughs> you know, but I get these crazy jobs from, you know, and I work for nice people. I met Edward Gorey through his books. I went to see him, I had his address. I looked at his work. He was very silent. He would just tell me to do something and I did it. He never really talked about himself. He was a, in another eccentric. I knew Gorey when he was just starting to write his things like The Curious Sofa and I was like his secretary. He gave me one of the copies of his first prints of a bug, it was called The Bug Book and I still have it. Then I worked also for Joseph Cornell. He had references to every piece that he had done with 
the paintings he liked that he would reproduce and have done for him, and then he would work a box around it. So he had maybe about 15 different, uh, a collection of 15 to 20 pieces that were the same piece, but he would reuse them. And he taught me that. Unknowingly, I would look at that and say, oh, that was used in this one, and this was used in that one. This is what he taught me. Uh, he didn't know what he did, but this is how I started in collage, because my, my head was always working in collage on a certain level. And I did this, and I thought of Joseph, this one right here. And see what I'm using? I'm using the same setup that he would do, only mine is flat. He would use the same thing in another level. He was like a stage set man. You know, he had this old attitude. He would be a, a brilliant stage, stage designer set, set man because he understood format and the obvious of, of depth and width and, and circumference. And one of the things that I, I was really sad about, he was so much of a hermit in his own right that he never quite, he never quite did that for everyone to look at because his pieces are like you walk into this, this how can I say this, this vision of a play, and everything he's, he's saved up is for a reason. There's reasons that he has certain things set up. He's, he was a brilliant man, very strange and very wonderful, and I really loved him. I really did. And it's a shame that I could never, I was never able to, I, I was never able to express myself to him the way I wanted to. I was just a person that did correspondence for him. That's all I did. But he really taught me a lot. He was a very, very incredible man. Very incredible person. Based on your experience, what would be your advice to young people who are considered moving to New York and wanted an artistic life? I mean, you can go someplace. You can learn a technique from a certain teacher, but the things you've got to propel into it is something that's in your heart, something you project from yourself, something you do eclectically put in your head. And you say, well, now I have a technique for this and I'm going to change something. I'm going to make it a little bit different. I'm going to like work with something else. I'm going to add it to it. That, that's how I would, I would, that's how I would think. That's how I would think. See, that's how art works with me. Only with me, maybe, maybe not with you, but it's a process. I start with one thing, then I keep going and going until I come up with a final product of who I am now. What I love about myself is the fact that I took this pen and I wasn't afraid of the paper. That's all I can say about it, basically. I've always had that urge to look at art, enjoy it, never be jealous of it, never be scared of it. Anything I see, I could work with.